So, you've thought about the advantages and disadvantages of free ranging your chickens. If you don't know what they are, check out my earlier video. I'll put a link up here. So you've thought about the advantages and you want to free range your chickens, but you want to make the most of the advantages and minimise the disadvantages while you do so. Let's talk about some options. Free ranging is not an all or nothing black or white kind of thing. I suppose you could say that strictly speaking free ranging meant raising your chickens in a world without borders. Your chickens can go where and when they want to and set their own limits. You don't define their territory, they do. Just like the jungle fowl used to. Complete free ranging must be very rare because it needs a very large area indeed, free of threats and risks as well as fences. The second type of free ranging is confined ranging. There are fences that stop the chickens from roaming onto the road or your neighbour's place, so they don't get to define their own territory. You define the boundaries. But the chickens do have access to a large enough area so that it seems like pretty much the same as complete free ranging as far as the chickens are concerned. They can roam around pretty much where and when they like, choosing their activities and where they want to be throughout the day retiring to their chicken house at night and leaving when they wake up in the morning. Most people who say they free range their chickens mean this and it still takes a very large area within the confines of the fences so the chickens don't feel confined and the land doesn't get worn out by their activities. A variation of confined ranging is mobile ranging. The typical example is a chicken tractor. Chickens are enclosed in what might be a fairly small area around their chicken house. They get to come and go in and out of their house as and when they please, and the whole thing is moved from time to time so that the chickens periodically get a new area of land with fresh grass full of bugs and seeds and such delights. People who use this system are very enthusiastic about it. The area within the fence might be quite small and the whole thing moved often, or it might be as big as a paddock used for other stock. A variation of mobile ranging is called multi-species rotational grazing, and this works very well in a farm environment. The chickens follow other animals in a cyclical progression. The chickens do a valuable job of reducing the numbers of fly larvae that otherwise multiply on the animal droppings. And at the same time, the chickens benefit from the protein of those grubs. And the chicken manure is loaded with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium and calcium, which are all important nutrients for the soil. Rotational ranging minimises the impact of the chickens on the land, allowing the grass to recover in each area when the chickens are fenced out. If chickens have access to the same piece of land all the time, they will keep on pecking at their favoured plants, destroying them and killing them off before they get a chance to go to seed, and so all that will be left are the weeds. Rotational ranging can be done on a smaller scale too. Basically, it just means that the chickens are allowed into one area while being kept out of another and then move on to that second area when they are kept out of the first area and so on until they work their way back to the first area again. The area involved can be quite small if you deliberately re-sow the cover crop. And don't just think grass. Actually, chickens don't digest grass very well because they're not ruminants like sheep or cows. They actually prefer clover. So if you're planting specifically for chickens, choose a mixture of plants such as clover, alfalfa and legumes. 
the system is very popular with organised gardeners. After the crops are harvested from an area, the chickens are let in to clean up the last of the crop, eat any weeds and bugs, and turn over the soil with their scratching. Then the chickens are moved on, and that area is ready for replanting, and so on in a continuous cycle. In fact, some systems like this are constructed in a circle around a stationary hen house. I'm not that organised a gardener, but I have used a variation of rotational ranging, in which I let the chickens into one low-lying area here during the summertime, and then in the wintertime I fence them out of that area because it would become a boggy mess if I left them there all winter and keep them in the higher ground where they haven't been all summer and so the grass is fresh. Some of my vegetable gardens are included in this alternating system. In the winter when there are no crops in this garden bed the chickens have access to scratch it up and clean out the bugs and weed seeds. And when I clean out the chicken house during the winter, I dump the poop-rich shavings from the chicken house floor straight onto this garden bed. This stuff is too rich to be applied straight onto growing plants, but by the time the seasons have rolled around and it's time to plant that garden again, it has all rotted down to a rich, friable, compost-laden mix that the plants thrive in. For a typical suburban household with a reasonable size area more like a large garden than a farm, perhaps the most common system is part-time ranging, in which the chickens are closely confined in a run for part of the day and then allowed out to range in a large area for a while. With part-time ranging, you can keep your chickens secure in their run and perhaps give them some supervision when they're out ranging. As you get familiar with their usual clucks and squawks, you will recognize the difference between pecking order disputes and alarm calls. <laughs> this system is not foolproof. A chicken can get taken or killed by a predator very quickly but it is a lot safer than full-time ranging. The easiest time for you to allow them to free range is in the afternoon or evening. Even an hour or so at the end of the day can be worthwhile. At dusk, they will put themselves back to bed in their chicken house. And you just have to do a quick head count and close the door behind them, keeping them safe from nighttime visitors with a taste for chicken. Some chicken owners who do care very much for their chickens never let them out to free range at all. That doesn't mean the chickens are locked up in a tiny cage with no window. They usually have access to an outdoor run just not to the wide open spaces outside the run. This might be necessary because of a simple lack of space in an urban setting or concerns about predators. Chickens who are kept confined full time need more care and attention from you. You will need to ensure they have activities to occupy their time and can exercise their natural desires to scratch and peck and dust bathe they won't be able to find treats for themselves, but you can give them insect treats such as mealworms, kitchen scraps, and lots of greens such as the outer leaves of cabbages, or old gone to seed spinach, or if you live in New Zealand, puha. But of course, this extra attention that you give your chickens isn't work. It's the enjoyment of keeping chickens, caring for them and interacting with them. 
Like everything, it's a matter of finding a balance, and there is no best way that will be best for everyone. But if you understand your chickens and know what they need, then you'll be able to find a way that is best for you and your chickens. Hey, thanks for watching. Thank you.